Thank you. I'm happy to be here, and thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm going to talk today about a method uh, that we're developing at the University of Puerto Rico Mind West, which uh, estimates evapotranspiration, and it's based on the satellite, the GOES satellite. My talk, maybe uh, some of the examples I have are a bit oriented towards agriculture as opposed to forestry, but uh, I would like you to kind of use your imagination and, and think of, oh, how, how you could use this, because I'm, I'm hoping that this will become a product on the internet and that people will just uh, download this information and use it for their research. That would be that would be fantastic. So my uh, co-authors are shown here. Uh, John uh, Mesikowski is from the University of Alabama at Huntsville, and he's really the primary investigator doing the the remote sensing work, and it's based on solar radiation. So he's been involved in that work for some time, and we started to collaborate and. Today, I'll share with you what we, we came up with. But uh, the others on there are a couple of graduate students, Melvin Cardona, Alejandra Rojas. Melvin is from electrical engineering, and Alejandra is from civil engineering. And Ramon Vasquez is a professor in electrical and computer engineering at the University of Puerto Rico, Maya West. What I thought might be better is to just give you this link where you will find uh, any number of papers that you can download and then you can pick the ones that look interesting. But this presentation today, there is a paper by the same name and if you'd like, you can, you can download that. So I want to start with a little overview about evapotranspiration. It is a component of the hydrologic cycle and of course we have rainfall, surface runoff and, and stream flow. There's aquifer recharge change in soil moisture and we have evapotranspiration. Basically from the, the, the little cartoon here, we see that evapotranspiration is basically the evaporation of water from the surface. It could be transpiration from plants or from surface water bodies, which then creates clouds redeposited on the surface via uh, precipitation. But I think that of all the, the components of the hydrologic cycle, it's probably the least appreciated. Maybe soil moisture is, is also not as appreciated. But the reason, I think, is because we don't see it. But it's actually a very, very large piece of the hydrologic cycle. For example, in Puerto Rico, if we have an average of five millimeters per day of evapotranspiration, that's equivalent to 45 million cubic meters per day or 11 billion gallons of water get evaporated into the atmosphere. And so it's a huge amount. And of course, Puerto Rico is a small area. So imagine vast agricultural areas such as the Midwest of the US. And of course, it has an effect on the atmosphere as well. There's a feedback between the the climate itself and the moisture that's released from the surface. But we depend on it in agriculture. Knowledge of evapotranspiration is important to achieve optimal yields from crops. And it's also very important from a water resource planning standpoint. Evapotranspiration is typically the largest component of the, the energy budget. And it's possible to simply think in terms of water or energy with a conversion factor. So when you get all this sol solar radiation, it has to balance somehow. And so uh, usually if there's enough moisture at the surface, the largest component of the energy balance to balance off that solar energy is called the latent heat flux, which is also evapotranspiration. And why do we have that? It's why do we have this latent heat flux or evapotranspiration is to keep the, the plants cool. If we didn't have the moisture, the only way that the plants could release energy, heat is by gaining enough temperature so that there would be a big temperature difference between the air and the leaf. And if that happened, you would probably get just major stress. The, the plants would go into stress. So uh, nature has figured out a way 
to release energy in a different way, and that's through evaporation. It's a very, very effective way. And of course, we release, uh, heat is released from our bodies the same way. And in Puerto Rico, um, the potential of evapotranspiration is greater than the rainfall during several months of the year, uh, especially in uh, areas like Ponce. So here's what e evapotranspiration is. It's the combination of transpiration from plant leaves and evaporation of water from uh, surfaces such as uh, wet wet leaves or lakes and other or, or just soil uh, the moisture from the soil can be released by evaporation transpiration is the process of converting water liquid water which is in the plant leaf and exposed to the atmosphere via stomates or stomata there's these microscopic holes on the leaf typically on the bottom of the leaf, and, um, and that's where the water is released uh, in the form of transpiration. So uh, I'm just gonna use uh, an agricultural example of why, what are the benefits of wing evapotranspiration, and then what we use that information for in agriculture is irrigation scheduling. If we, if we know evapotranspiration, which I, I'm gonna to refer to probably as ET, if we know the ET, then we know how much water the plants need. And if we know how much the plants need, then we can manage the water or schedule the water. So what are the benefits? If we schedule irrigation water, we can conserve water, minimize leaching of chemicals and contamination of, uh, of ground, uh, contamination of groundwater, minimize surface runoff and contamination of streams, minimize energy use and cost, maximize crop yields, and maximize profits to farm. So there are, there are a lot of reasons for, for knowing ET and then for managing the water. Remote sensing methods for estimating ET, there are quite a few out there, but they rely on different remote sensing tools or, or sensors which are on board uh, the polar orbiting satellites or the geostationary satellites. And each has their complexities, unique complexities and advantages and disadvantages. In this talk, we're gonna focus in on this one, radiation method, and my co-author, he also is one of the originators of this method here. The advantage of using this method is that you can get real high resolution ET. You can get right into a field. The method that we're looking at initially here in Puerto Rico is at a one kilometer resolution. So we don't really have a lot of fields that are uh, one kilometer in size or the, the satellite pixel may not really conveniently fit over the field and so you always end up having different types of vegetation. So uh, initially anyhow we can look at uh, watershed scale, water budgets and I'll show you maybe in the next slide how we actually can use it in a field. Uh, it's the next slide. Briefly, ET studies in uh, Puerto Rico look like this. From the 50s to the 70s, we had drainage lysimeter studies. These were performed by sugarcane companies. And they use these, oh, I'm sorry, they, they use these drainage lysimeters because back then they didn't have computer programs and the meteorological methods that were developed later. 